Hello everyone, Vincent Hill from HDTV Test here. In this video, we are going to explore the best recommended settings on a Sony XH90, also marketed as the Brava X900H in the USA, when paired up with a next-gen console such as the Sony PS5 or the Xbox Series X. Now obviously, in this video, I'm going to be using the Sony PS5 with the X900H, just because you know it's Sony and being on brand and stuff. But my settings will also be applicable to the Xbox Series X, so don't you worry, Xbox Series X owners out there. And I've always wanted to do more videos like this with another TV other than the LG CX or C10 OLED. But it just so happens that manufacturers, they have all their samples sent out to other more important publications. And so, you know, I have to wait a long while. And in the end, I got impatient because I have a few videos that I need to do. So I decided to just buy this one outright from Richard Sounds Manchester. They have been extremely helpful, so I'll leave their details in the YouTube description below. If you are considering buying a television, if you can support them, they'll be fantastic. And you can see here that I've just really unboxed this TV, and there are protective films still stuck on this display here. But what we're going to do is to go through some steps that you need to take on this television in terms of the picture settings and also other system settings before you can get the best out of your PS5. So the first thing that I want to do is to just press the gear button on the remote control and this will bring up the quick taskbar and then what we'll do is we will press on settings and the first thing that you need to do is to go into watching TV and then go into external inputs and then go to HDMI signal format and then you need to change either HDMI 3 or HDMI 4 to unlock HDMI 2.1 on this television. Now, remember that the Sony XH90 or X900H will only have two HDMI 2.1 ports, and those are HDMI 3 and HDMI 4 respectively. But HDMI 3 is also doing ER or enhanced ARC duties. So I think you know, if you are only going to be using one port, you might as well just put it into HDMI 4, which is what I have done. So if I click on HDMI 4, you need to change the format to enhanced format with 4K at 120p. So this will unlock HDMI 2.1 and set the port to be using FRL or the fixed rate link signaling method, which is used by HDMI 2.1. So after doing that, what we will do is to go back out and then you can see that you know the PS5 now is going to be displaying in HDR and if I can click on video output information so by unlocking FRL or HDMI 2.1 on the television by selecting enhanced format 4K 120p you can start getting a UHD resolution of 3840 times 10160 at 60 hertz with full RGB chroma. So from that point of view, it is certainly beyond the capabilities of HDMI 2.0 and it is definitely needed from the point of view of your display to unlock HDMI 2.1 and enable that setting before you can get all this goodness. So what I'm going to do now is to continue with the rest of the picture settings. And the thing with the Sony's game mode settings, they are all fairly good. But I'll go through most of them. And the thing is that I like to generally use this edit button and add a direct picture setting access onto this quick menu taskbar. So if I can click on picture settings here. Now, the reason why this TV has kicked into game mode when connected to the Sony PlayStation 5 is because I have actually left the auto picture mode as on. So this is a fairly useful function that seeks to simulate ALLM or auto low latency mode. So when you play a game or say start the PS5 on this TV, it will automatically switch into game mode. And notice if I get out from let's say the PS5 UI and if I go into media and if I start playing my favorite Blu-ray disc, Skyfall, which is incidentally done by Sony as well. I'm just being totally on brand here. And you will see that because it is actually 
kicking into a different YUV SDR format, then the picture mode has switched out of game mode into whatever other more accurate picture mode that you prefer. And obviously, it is stuck at standard at the moment because you know I haven't actually calibrated it, but the most accurate picture preset will be custom for you. So if you want to just set it to custom, then you can watch Blu-rays or 4K Ultra HD Blu-rays on your PS5. And if you leave this auto picture mode on, then it will be switching automatically into game mode. And also for SDR content, remember to switch light sensor off as well, because you know this will change the picture dynamically, which will throw off any accurate color information that you may desire. So after doing that, what we are going to do is to get out from here and then right so we are back into the playstation 5 ui and you can see that you know again it has actually automatically switched into game mode so that is the result of using auto picture mode setting it on and then what we're going to do is to just go through all these picture settings very quickly most of them are correct but i'm going to show you a couple that may need changing here and there. So from the brightness point of view, all of them are correct. So brightness at maximum, which is essential for HDR content, contrast at 90 for HDR 10, gamma at zero, which will track the PQ UTF most accurately, black level at 50, which will preserve dark detail, and then black adjust of advanced contrast enhancer of auto local dimming medium and extended dynamic range high. These are the best settings for getting the highest peak brightness and also you know with the correct tone mapping on sony televisions and then if we go into color this one i would prefer to lower the color to 50 for the most accurate color reproduction now obviously some of you may prefer a more vivid color and that's entirely fine you know it's your tv you can do whatever you want you know you can just switch everything on to max and don't listen to me at all that's, <laughs> that's your prerogative. But for an accurate color reproduction, color 50 is the most accurate in terms of mapping of the color gamut to let's say Rec 20 or even in SDR Rec 709. And then hue zero, color temperature expert one is the most accurate to D65 white point, which is commonly used in the film and broadcast industry and increasingly more and more games. They are doing more cinematic cutscenes and they are increasingly adopting the D65 white point. And Expert One is, you know, accurate, you know, among all the color temperature presets. And I really commend Sony for using an accurate picture preset because I don't think many other manufacturers actually use a color temperature that is close to D65. I mean, off the top of my head, out of the box, the LG and the Samsung's, you know, they use a very blue color temperature and with Panasonic, I think, you know, even in their game mode, they have some other things going on as well, probably vivid color on and stuff. But, you know, from Sony's point of view, their game mode is actually fairly accurate. So you just need to actually lower color to 50 to get the most accurate color reproduction without oversaturating the HDR or UHD colors and then live color off. And then if we go into clarity, sharpness at 50, which is neutral for Sony televisions. And then if we go into variety creation, what I like to do is to just switch this off completely because we do not want any edge enhancement, especially when you are sending such a high resolution game to the display. You don't really need any edge enhancement to try and sharpen it even more. So I like to reduce resolution to minimum and then just turn off variety creation altogether. And then what we'll do is we will go down to the noise reduction options, which are grayed out anyway, because you don't need that for games. And this may add input lag as well. And motion, generally turn it off. I mean, if you want black frame insertion to be used with certain SDR games, you know, you can try and do that. But, you know, I generally wouldn't even advise, you know, going for that because it is just going to, you know, create more flicker, darken the image and potentially make 
the black trailing of VA LCD panels even more obvious. And then video signal, you know, just leave it all on auto. I don't think you should actually try and do anything too clever here. I mean, if you really want, you know, you can actually set this to limited and then set your console to limited, but you need to make sure that they match exactly limited with limited on the console or full and full on the console. Or the best is just to use auto and auto on the console. When you use auto and auto on the PS5, what will happen is that when you are playing games, it will be using RGB full. The console will be sending out RGB full range and the TV will be detecting the correct HDMI signal and then will be using the full range of HDMI signal as well. And then when you are playing, let's say, 4K Blu-rays or uh, 1080p Blu-ray, then the console will be sending out YUV 422 signal and then the TV, because you've set it at auto, it will be using the limited range of SDR, let's say 16 to 235. So I would just leave it on auto with auto on the console. And advanced color adjustment, you know, I can't advise you anything because, you know, you, <laughs> yeah, this is meant for, you know, those people with access to colorimeters to measure the color and also the grayscale on screen. And, you know, or you can hire a professional calibrator in to do that. And you can use the Kalman for Bravia app to do that. So I think those are roughly the steps that you need to take to set your TV up for a good picture with the Sony PS5 in terms of the recommended settings. I don't think there's too much wrong there, you know, just a few changes here and there. And I will seek to try and do more videos with other TVs, but it depends on where the manufacturers are actually able to loan me these TVs for me to do these sort of videos. Because I think, you know, I don't know, whether do you find these videos helpful? You know, in my PS5 settings explanation video, you know, in the end, I left everything at automatic. And some of you just said that, you know, I've wasted 20 minutes of your life. But my goal is to just to seek to explain all these settings. And, you know, hopefully I've achieved it for some of you who are interested in these settings. If you'd like to watch some of our other videos on next-gen consoles and HDMI 2.1, I've created a playlist here if you'd like to click on it, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.